Thank you for joining us live on KXP. KXP streams worldwide at kxp.org, and there's also our mobile apps. KXP is a nonprofit, and these live performances are made possible by donations from people like you. My name is Greta Rose, and I'm here in our live performance space. I'm so happy to welcome No Vacation to the studio. Hi, Greta. <laughs> hey. Please go ahead, No Vacation. Take it away.
That was No Vacation live on KXP. That sounded stunning. Thank you so much for sharing such an incredible performance. It was beautiful. Sabrina, something I enjoy about your music is the way you pair a sentimental subject matter with uplifting atmospheric instrumentation, which as a whole makes for this beautiful sense of duality. Can you talk about how you came to create this signature emotional complexity in your songs? Hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, I usually start off songwriting by writing like a guitar melody or a chord progression and then layer lyrics on top of it. And then I think it usually starts off a lot slower. And then when Nat and Harrison and I come together, um, we just kind of uplift it. And so I think that's kind of where the duality comes from is like when we all kind of work together, kind of creates that more bright sonic sound. Awesome. I love hearing about the process. And Nat, I have a question for you. Your role in the band on keys, violin, bass adds a lot of really gorgeous texture to each of the songs. And I also read somewhere you love the book A Mango Shaped Space, which is about <laughs> synesthesia, the mingling of the senses. Yeah. I'm curious, does color or texture influence your relationship to the band or how you make music? Um, I would say, I guess, like, color of tones, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then what was the other part of it? Color is in what? Color or texture? Texture, yes. Texture is definitely, I think, something that partakes in the writing of, like, the instrumental pieces. In regards to, like, synesthesia, I wish uh, I was able to experience that because I feel like that would add, like, a whole other layer of, you know, writing because then you'd be, like, putting other senses with that. Um, I'm not sure if everyone knows like what synesthesia is, but pretty much it's just like having other senses. So it's like you see colors, but then you can like hear, like if, or like if you hear a note or something, you might see a color associated with it. Um, but I guess, yeah, when it comes down to it, just like lots of textures and trying to add other little things, like contemporary things, romantic strings kind of add to it. But I don't know, I think it's something that always ends up coming last because we have like the song as a whole and it's just what else can we add without doing too much and taking away from the core of the song but still adding like a little bit in the background. So yeah, I, I think so. And I think it's like the textures and tones is kind of like a whole group thing. Like Harrison puts a really, like a really plays a big part in making all those tones as well. Because when we're writing, we're not, it's just not solely me on keys. It's kind of like us collaborating together on everything. Totally. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. And I was just fascinated to know. It's a fun thing to talk about. And Sabrina, I've read that you are a designer and you've created all the album art for the records. I was dying to ask you, how would you describe No Vacation in terms of visual language? It's a great question. <laughs> um, I think when I approach No Vacation as like a project, I kind of project this lightheartedness. And like you mentioned earlier with the songwriting, I feel like there's always kind of like a tinge, there's like a duality. Like, for example, we just worked on some long sleeves for this tour and a lot of it is just kind of like the sleeves, for example, are like um, a flower blooming and then a flower wilting. And so it's kind of like this duality of life and death and also like happy and sad or and everything in between. So it's kind of like I tried to infuse that into the visuals. Um, I don't think it's like always conscious. It's just kind of like something, maybe that's just the theme that I feel it's when I approach it. Just yeah. a part of you, that beautiful yeah. duality, complementary opposition. I love that. Um, so when I listen to your music, I hear influences of Slow Dive, My Bloody Valentine, and Mazzy Star. Do you feel a connection to these artists? And what mo motivated you to embrace similar sonic qualities in your music? 
It's a great harassing question. Yeah, I think that's a harassing question. I suppose so. Uh, I mean, yeah, those are three three bands that I love. Um, definitely, definitely influences the live the live set a whole lot, less so than the recordings to me at least. Um, but I mean, yeah, there's a reason we're playing uh, Jazz Masters and Jaguars and JC 120s and everything. It's for me, it's an homage to the ones that did it before us, um, and also it's they figure out how to make that sound sound right. And I think for the live set, it just really brings a lot to add more color and more, more life to the songs. It some, at times can be a little stripped down on the recordings. I don't know if that answered the question. but It totally did. No, that was perfect. And are there any contemporary influences that have worked their way into your music? Um, I would say like, con like we have some um, instrumental pieces like on some of the EPs, like piano. So a lot of contemporary piano is influenced in that um, kind of writing and even like the synth parts, you know, even though the tones aren't the same as just a plain piano, even though they're not plain, but um, yeah, the contemporary parts, I think a lot of the, anything that's like string or key related uh, is heavily influenced through that. Um, but it's kind of also done un like unknowingly because that's just kind of what I listened to. But I never, when we first kind of started writing together, I didn't really listen to the same music as Sab and Harrison. So I think we all have such different backgrounds that it came together and made something new-ish, uh, but not on purpose, so. Absolutely, well, your sound together is gorgeous and I feel so lucky to be here today with this front row seat. Um, no Vacation has been a band for roughly 10 years and you've been through a lot of transformation and I've noticed throughout your discography a maturation of the songs you're creating. What are you enjoying most about this current iteration of the band? I mean, we're all homies and like naturally we spend a lot of time together and we have a great time. Um, and I think that shows on the stage too, the way that um, we mesh together and we um, fall in, but. I'd say this has been like the most consistent lineup we've had yeah. so far. Um, and I think what's nice about that is that it, it does, we all know the songs pretty well at this point. Um, so it's nice that, um, I think we can explore a little more with them when we're in rehearsals and everything, and even on stage, bringing something new um, that you wouldn't hear before. It definitely shows. The talent among you is great. Sabrina, I've heard you mention the importance of simplicity when it comes to songwriting. The art of editing is something that many creatives struggle with, myself included. Do you have any tips for fellow creatives who tend to overcomplicate things? Mm. I think find the core of the song. I would find the core of the song and mm, grasp that. And everything else that feels like just distractions or unneeded, I, think, I don't think is necessary. I always, when I'm writing, it's always, does it make the song better or does it make it different? Yeah, so. yeah. Mm. Yeah, and like with the, the whole simplicity thing, I think it kind of, it kind of really like brings out the best in each of our qualities because sometimes, you know, one person might write something that seems too busy, but then I feel like something that I've always said is that like Harrison and Sab lack, or like make up for what I lack most in, or like their strengths are my weaknesses, vice versa. And there's been times, you know, where like if Harrison was doing like a bass part, and like seven, like this sounds kind of like busy to us, but then to him, like no, this is sound, this sounds good. So even though there's like this, like there is like simplicity in it, but then it's simplicity, like it's subjective, right? It's based on the person. So maybe this might be simple to him, but someone else might not think so. But we kind of started doing this kind of when our writing have a scale of well, how much is this gonna ruin it for me versus how much do you love it? So if you love it an eight out of 10 and I just dislike it a three out of 10, then we'll stick with it. So, but the thing is it's, it's hard because 
you know, again, since, since, since simplicity can be subjective or it could also be like technical when you're like, oh, like the mind can really listen to three things at the same time, right? But is this part, is it simple because there's less notes or is it simple just because there's like not as much, much texture on it or is there more space? So um, I think like when we're going for a more, you know, if we're trying to like reanalyze the song, we kind of, I kind of tend to lean to Harrison and say like, was, is this too much? And I'm like, no, it's good. So that's the beauty of having bandmates that you've been around like with for 10 years. They kind of know what's a lot for you and what is not, so. Yeah, the practice of restraint, oof. Well, No Vacation, you have been such a joy, such a pleasure to be here today. And okay, I do have one last just short question for you. I heard that you have an animal mascot, too, in fact. Whew, we have quite a few. There's a lot. Yeah? We, well, it depends on if we're talking about the live ones or the passed on ones. Oh, both. Which There's one are you referring to? Both sides. Um, I think the first mascot we had was my hedgehog, Bruce. Rest in peace. And my dog, Yam Yam. And then the dog, Yam Yam, who is still alive. The song was, sorry. The dog was named after the song, to clarify. By my mom. <laughs> by Sabrina's mom. Um, but now we have all of our cats. So at one point I had nine, but now I have two. Uh, two cats. And we also have like James's cat, Romo, that appears in a lot of things. Harrison has one of the kittens that I have. Alex has a stuffed cat. Um, kitty. But you're... The, the next merch drop is actually going to showcase the many different uh, felines of Nove Cat Catchin. Nove Catchin. Um, but that's, uh, you know, to be announced soon. Well, that's exciting. And is there anything else you would like to share with your fans? Um, yeah, I guess coming on to 10 years, um, thank you for supporting us and listening and we love you guys. Okay. Thank you so much for stopping by. This has been amazing. You've been listening to No Vacation live on KEXP. Help support our programming and fuel more music discovery by making a financial contribution at kxp.org. I want to send a huge wave of appreciation to all of our donors who support live sessions like this and help us discover new music. If you're a fan of our videos on YouTube, subscribe and you'll get a notification every time a new session launches. Again, huge thank you to No Vacation. Thank you so much for being here today live on KEXP.